Hey there, Tallahassee, Jay Rebel here. Welcome to another edition of the Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce podcast. We are delighted to be with you once again. We've got another fun and interesting installment. Uh, I'm joined here, as always, by my uh, world-famous co-host, Sarah Solomon, who does a great job. Growing in the ranks. That's it. Yeah, yeah no doubt. <laughs> we're, uh, we're rising every day, folks, hopefully rising on your uh, attention span. Uh, with the show, we're 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 just marching on through it, and we've got a lot of good stuff planned for you. We had a little meeting earlier just today, planning out uh, the next few months. But before we get down that road, we actually want to kind of take a, a maybe a detour from the normal route of the podcast that we do today, because we've got two guests with us, and it's an interesting reason why they're here. They both are uh, involved and engaged in the community in their own ways. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and their stories and their involvement with the chamber. But the main subject of this show is going to be what, what uh, a very interesting uh, setup that we have here within our organization that brings people like our guests together. It's called our Total Resource Campaign. You've probably heard us uh, expound on it here on the podcast briefly before. Uh, but our Total Resource Campaign is how we bring revenue into the building here at the chamber every year to fund all the programs that we do for you our members and we've got two of our great volunteers with us today who are driving uh, that great campaign to make it a success so without further ado we will turn to that conversation we have with us uh, mr park broom he is the uh, executive vice president of tallahassee leon county federal credit union Uh, and we have myself green myself is uh, head of media and external affairs for Talcon Electric Cooperative, uh, both wonderful organizations doing lots in our community. And these wonderful individuals are doing a lot for your Chamber of Commerce. So welcome to the show, y'all. Thanks for having us. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So before we kind of jump into all things uh, TRC, as we like to call it, why don't we start a little bit and, and y'all kind of give us your story of just chamber involvement and engagement how did you get to be involved with the chamber and then uh maybe tell us a little bit about what your day job is and uh and then we'll kind of go into what what you, what we've got you working on here at the chamber these days so my son will kick it to you first why don't we start off with your story well uh, it's very interesting uh, the chamber has always been a part of my career path uh, uh, it was betsy betsy gray who was um, a former employee here who really wanted me to get involved on the level as far as being an ambassador for the chamber. But um, I was very active in the community at that point and then very engaged with my with, um, the responsibilities at work. It didn't work out as well for me. But then I had the opportunity to actually start working for a company, which was Career Source Capital Region, and that was a, a great partnership with the chamber. And that's um, that was probably my, my segue in into being, as I would say, all in with the chamber at that point. And so I became an ambassador for the chamber, and then I just started volunteering at different different activities and events that the chamber has to offer. And in my role with Talquin Electric, it just it just it just was a great marriage right there because that uh, with Talquin Electric my responsibilities are to partner with our local chamber and to get very actively involved in it because economic development is very important community engagement it's all part of our seven cooperative principles that work together hand in hand so it you know I was able to continue this this partnership as we move forward in my career path and it's been a key it's been key for me to be a part of the chamber so thank you. I just thank God that you're able to, you know, deal with my dad out there at Talquin. Uh, I'm a big Talquin fan because that pretty much, you know, put me through, uh, you know, everything as a kid. Uh, great man, big fan of his. But thank you for putting up with him. He's a handful. Uh, I, have to, I have to say, I love your dad, John Revel. It's awesome. He is my key guy to go to him and uh, Bill James, but John Revel. He runs a great operation. He keeps it fun, and so I, I like working with him. Well, that's good. <laughs> he uh, he always speaks very highly of you. And, um, pardon the moment of levity there, everyone, but we'll uh, switch over here to our friend Park Broom. Park, tell us a little bit about your world and experience here within the chamber and how you got to be so engaged. Okay, well, sure. Well, so um, mine, I guess, starts back as a, as a kid because my um, grandparents and parents actually owned a business downtown on Adam Street. Um, their first hardware company was actually located there where Andrews is now. 
Um, they moved that business down to Gain Street back when that was all the industrial side of town. Um, so we spent many a time at warehouses watching the trains go by in the back and things like that in the summer. Um, as I got older and went through high school and college here, um, I actually, every employer I've worked for actually has been a strong supporter of the chamber. Um, and therefore I had opportunity to get involved. Um, I remember you're probably talking 12 years ago now, first involvement being with um, new member receptions and orientations at the old columns mm. facility, um, right, a couple blocks down the road. Um, with that, you know, I've throughout the years I've done, you know, I've served on as a chair of Access Tallahassee, which is a young professionals organization. Um, I've gone through Leadership Tallahassee and I sit on their board of governors now. Um, so I've really had the opportunity, you know, as long as I've been a professional in this town outside of college, to really engage with the chamber and its members and really understand what makes business in this town click, you know, and what makes it work and what makes it not work, and how do we move that needle forward, you know, as a community to really benefit everybody that lives and works here. So, Before we move on and start talking about TRC, I kind of wanted to see what you guys like about our community. We obviously all love Tallahassee because we wouldn't be here if we didn't, but share with me an anecdote or a story something that you honor or value in our community well of course i do you know i do like tallahassee um you know i've been here my whole life and my family's been here my whole life um i'm raising a son here who's in kindergarten at the same school that i went to kindergarten at um that's big to me um and i really think you know tallahassee it's kind of it, we're at that we've got a really good sweet spot where we're not too big but we're not too small there's still plenty of stuff to do um, you know, me and some friends, we laugh about it a lot as when we were growing up here, you know, your weekends during football season were football. There was not much else. We had YMCA football on Saturday morning where everybody was a winner. And then Saturday night, we all went to Doak Campbell to watch the Seminoles play. Um, Jay can probably relate to this, um, but that's what it was. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so we look back and say, you know, how things have changed um, dr dramatically, but not in a bad way. Um, you know, we have grown. We continue to grow. We see changes in our community, but... I think we see them at a pace that makes sense for the people that are digesting them every day and dealing with them. Um, you know, there's there's bigger cities that are always have great opportunities also, but I think business owners here just have to realize that the opportunities are here, um, and even for those looking for jobs, we just have to make sure that we dig until we find them sometimes, because sometimes they're right under the surface and we just haven't dug in the right spot. So, Well, that's... It, as um, as opposed to Park over there, I'm a transplant. I am originally from Indianapolis, and I came here by way of coaching over at Florida State University. So um, I, I before that though, I have to tell you, I was um, in Gainesville, Florida, and it was a big. <laughs> yes, Don't tell my yes, dad. Yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was. Um, it, it was a good transition for me, and at that time, I was raising my son here, and it, it was a really good community for for me to raise my son. It was very safe. It was it was um, it, it gave me that that southern hospitality that that I needed. I have a great church family here, as well as the business community who that has embraced me and um, allowed me to um, help them in their businesses because I've had a very good pattern of um, career paths that I've gone down but and I've kept some I've gained and kept some really great relationships from working at Florida State from uh, Florida A&M and um, the other different entities so the, the the best thing about it for me is that it, it was a great place for me to raise my son and um, and then I later found my husband who was right down the street he's from uh, Miccosukee and um, he's that one who could say I remember when mm. this place didn't exist here and this place didn't exist there and so I get a lot of history as we drive down the street almost every day whenever we're together so it's been a great place for me so and I you know raising my my son and then finding the love of my life so it's been good you know we find it uh, there's a lot of commonality when we ask mm -hmm. that question to folks um, no matter what the background or experience is, there's a, a real belief that you can put some strong roots down in this community and, mm -hmm. and have an impact kind of um, maybe uh, in a more expeditious way than um, uh, you might in some other larger communities like mm -hmm. we were talking about, Park. And, you know, one of the things that I love about the TRC campaign, this is the warning that the segue is coming, <laughs> folks, is uh, that you can, as a business, you can really put your roots down mm -hmm. in, to the chamber uh, through those mechanisms that we afford everyone 
um, through the TRC uh, campaign each fall. So this is the toss-up. Either one of you can take a stab at this one. So if I'm if I'm Joe or Susie off the street, business owner, and I don't know a whole lot about the chamber or TRC campaign, can you tell me what the TRC campaign is just in the, in the layman's terms, as they say? Well, TRC, Total Resource Campaign, is, you know, I like to see it as an opportunity for not only for the business, the business connection, but it's person-to-person connection. It is something that um, allows you to get out and get to meet other people and to build relationships that are going to last a lifetime because that's what we're doing here. We're building we're building a foundation of relationships, and re- with relationships, those are the things that help you know that you're in a community and that they're going to be there for you. So the campaign, it, it is a... Um, it is driven um, for us to um, help increase the awareness of the chamber. But overall, if I had to say it, it, it is it's about building those relationships and helping them to grow their business and to um, to put down deep roots in Tallahassee. So we want everybody to, to benefit from it. And that's what the chamber allows for is for every business to get the opportunity to share among other businesses and other people about what they have to offer and why it's unique and special and why we all should be a part of it. So we are one big community coming together as a family. And um, I, I think for me, that's what the TRC campaign is about. How can I help your business be better and grow so that you can have a better life for you and your family? So I, I think that's what it's all about for me when I say, you know, TRC. So, so Park, you know, you, you both are in this role as uh, in a volunteer capacity um, to help shepherd companies into these sort of opportunities to tell the world about what they do through the programs that we produce here at the Chamber. How would you sort of describe what the volunteer environment is uh, and, and, and why would a volunteer engage in something like this on behalf of the Chamber? Well, I would say, um, and, and I think Maisel would agree with me on this, is really it's not only just to find out where you plug into the Chamber, but also as volunteers to where do we plug into your business? Um, where, what do you do that can f- help us or that we know can help somebody? Um, you know, we look at a lot of that side of it when we're doing what we're doing, when we're talking about different opportunities with your business and, and how these opportunities will help you grow and excel and move that needle forward. Um, but I think really what it, what it, on our end is it, I always look and say, after this conversation of this pr- prospect for this type of program is, how can I help them get to where they need to go on the other end? You know, can I sit, refer people to their business? Can I connect them through you know, phone conversation or a cup of coffee or email with someone that might do something that is complimentary to what they do that they could help them. Um, I, I think, you know, so so on our end, we look at, it's, it's very holistic the way we look at things is, is not only are you, you know, you're getting exposure for your business on the front end through chamber involvement and chamber sponsorships and even memberships, um, but also it's looking and says, you know, how does that help you long-term to, to become an ingrained citizen of this community and business in this community but also you know how does it help you connect with people that might do this something you do that y'all might be able, y'all might be business partners in five years you know and i'm sure that's happened in this program that we might not be fully aware of and we might be aware of some of them so i think you know when we look at that side of it is it's not just a one-sided approach it's a two-sided approach you know maybe this business hasn't come to an event that i go to that i think they'll benefit from come on and go with me next time i'll call you i'll give you the date and we'll meet you there and you know, we'll get you engaged with some people that have a like-minded idea on things. So, Tell me a little bit about the variety of opportunities. There, you know, anybody who's ever been to a chamber event has probably heard the speaker say, you know, thank you to our sponsors and we couldn't do it without them. But there's also other things. There's, you know, internet-based opportunities. There's events. There's all sorts of things with our affiliate programs. Can one of you kind of explain the variety that is possible and how you can kind of help tailor to fit that to whatever the business wants to reach. So, so sure. Yeah. I mean, like, you, like you said, there's all kinds of opportunities with the total resource campaign. Um, you know, the idea of this campaign when it initially started was to really get the legwork for chamber staff out of finding sponsors on demand as needed and really build the quality of those programs with that out of their way already. Um, as you, as you talked about, there's things from, I think $200 
up to $20,000 in different levels. Those could be social media, they could be new e-newsletters, they could be uh, print information, they can be event sponsors. Um, there's all these different type of spectrums and, and really as a TRC volunteer, what we do is we really sit down with you and say, what fits your business? It might not be that you're large enough where you can be gone for two hours in the middle of the day of, at an, you know, with travel time to a, to a luncheon. Well, what other opportunities are there to get the, your name out and your word out? Um, so, so we really look at that as a holistic, like I go back to the holistic side, is we look at all of it. You know, a lot of times businesses might say, you know, oh, well, well, I don't have the budget for this. And, and a lot of times we look and say, well, can you afford not to do this? Are there w other ways you can do things in your business to try this and see if it works? Um, you know, I, I think one of, the, one of the best things about our chamber um, is the fact that you get the follow-up data. You get the information of how many imprints you've had. Um, I think they can either provide down to the click-throughs when it's, when it's web-based. Um, you know, I got one the other day from my business and we're in the financial services industry of, here's what our referral report looks like based on information from chamber, chamber events. You know, so, so the chamber, not, it's not only a front-end process for them, but it's all the back-end. So they give you all that data, they give you the follow-up. Um, you know, they, in, in our world, they give us everything we need to look at the budgeting for next year and a marketing plan of, here's everywhere our name was and where it was used, how it was used and things like that. Um, so I really think that helps on our end make it, make it a no-brainer. Um, there's certainly other businesses out there that need to be in, in front of certain sectors or certain demographics, and this program pretty much hits every single one of those. Um, if it's not something that you feel it hits the nail on the head, that's when we sit down and talk about it and say, well, is there a way to maybe tweak this a little bit that makes more sense for you? Um, so I think, you know, we take feed, I'm a, I'm a believer feedback is a gift. So if it's not fitting you exactly, what does fit you? And let's see if we can get as close to that as possible. Yeah, I probably would add the fact that it, the champ, the, all the events and what's available out there, it's, it reaches all levels. You know, we have our youth leadership Tallahassee that's available out there. We have best and brightest and we have different areas and the, the world-class schools. And so, you know, you're going to touch the life of a child you know, at some point. And so, and maybe they're going to bury our future entrepreneurs out in, out in the community to keep them here at home and um, here in our, com our community here. You also have, you know, Access Tallahassee, which is, you know, our millennials. You, and we want to make sure that we do touch them because we want to keep them here. I mean, they go to Florida State. They go to Florida A&M, TCC. We want to keep that great talent that we're actually putting together a building and and, and um and we want to bring them we want to keep them here in our community and as well as our other mature audiences we touch every aspect of the lives that we affect here in the community and the you know for the chamber to be able to do that is 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 um super so i think that you know you can you're gonna if you step out and think outside the box in how to help your business and your family grow, you would know that the chamber touches all the lives here. I love how you guys both mentioned kind of, you know, there's there's multiple factors at play. There's age, there's demographics, there's programs. You can kind of touch everything. Um, Marcel, earlier when we were talking before the show, you mentioned how you feel that it's personally important for smaller businesses to get involved. Can you share with me a little bit of experience, maybe a small business owner that you have worked with, or why you feel it is important for businesses from all levels of membership to get involved? I think it's important. Um, we're going to talk about, again, we take we talk about the holistic approach, and we, we not only talk about the business owner, but we also talk about the people that they employ. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's people in our community that we want to stay here, but I have a, a small business um, uh, that I frequent a lot. It's, it's just bare, bare waxing, and um, what I did was it's been a continual building of a, a strong relationship where she trusts me and she trusts what I have to say to her and how to help her business grow. And, um, she has, um, she started off thinking that she wanted to go into one area, which was our new uh, e-newsletter. And then she realized, uh, later after talking with her husband that she wanted to grow and get and go to a bigger market, which is a prof um, women's professional forum. And what I did was, all I did was to really talk to her and hear, hear what she has to say. One of the things that I often live by is that people don't care what you know till they know you care, and that's simply by listening. And so I listen, but I also go there and, and, and have her, you know, pay for her services there so she knows that I'm not 
just there trying to get something from her, but I'm trying to make something grow for her. So I think for small businesses, you got to think outside the box. You know, you have to do something a little bit different than you have done before. And again, I, I always have these little things I go off of insanity. You know, the definition of insanity is to continue doing some, the same thing over and over again, expecting different result. Well, no, you know, we, so let's do something different, you know? And so that's what basically I try to share and that small businesses need to do that. Let's do something different than you did before. And if it's working, find out ways to increase that growth and enhance it because, you know, that's what we want to grow from a bit small business to a large business. Cause that's, that's basically what it does and getting your name out there. Um, it does help. It does help being a part of the chamber and, um, and I can also tell my own, my own story about Talquin Electric, you know, but um, it, small businesses, you are the heartbeat of Tallahassee and we need you to come and be a part of the chamber. So when, you know, we live in a world today where there is such an abundance of ways for people to communicate, mm -hmm. businesses to communicate. I mean, you know, it, it's not the age where you got to go billboard print, TV. I mean, there's just such a variety, right? And I think one of the things that, that maybe people might not be aware of is that the Chamber has an equally infinite variety of ways that you can reach our membership. Uh, and, and a big portion of the TRC campaign is helping our members become aware of those opportunities. And then what you guys as volunteers do so well is that sort of shepherding through what is out there and then trying to find that right fit what are some of the things that you know when you're sitting down with companies you're having these conversations what would you say they're looking for the most you know when, i mean they're all different but what what kind of conversations come up when, when it comes to say hey you know we're really trying to get in front of some people and this is what we have in mind these days what's what's out there what, what are people talking about i think one of the things that people deal with the most in, in their own business is really how in, how much time do I have to be engaged? And, and if, if, if I don't have a lot, how can I be engaged? Um, I think we get that a lot, especially with the, on the total resource campaign side, because we are asking people to make a commitment to the chamber. Um, they've already made a commitment to the chamber most of the time if they're already a member. So, that, so, so the benefit of the chamber as a whole benefits them. Um, but even for pe indiv individuals and businesses that are not members of the chamber already. Um, it's really helping them understand that you can fit in wherever you want to fit in. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds and hundreds of opportunities to do that. Help, let us help you find the right fit for you. And the first one might not be the right one. And that's okay because we'll keep trying and we'll keep figuring it out until we know what the right fit is. Um, you know, the chamber does a great thing with um, benefits and breakfast that's put on by the membership team. Um, and I think those are monthly, don't hold me to that. Um, and those are for prospective members and new members. And really just, it's it's a crash course on here's everything we put out and here's how we do it. Here's how you can plug into it and all that type of information. And for a new business that, you know, to me that that's vital, you know, because you, you know all the options right up front. Um, you know, I think as a member of TRC, you know, from the inception now, I think one of the best things in my mind are the fact that we have people that, participate as volunteers in total resource campaign now that were not a member when they started years ago and they might have been the first day in business business but they understand the payoff the payoff can be great it can be small but they do see the need and they see it's the right thing to do and they see that you know by advancing the community through the chamber it, it's a win-win for everybody in the long run so you know we always tell everyone um at least i I think we do a good job of telling everyone this, that those who come into a chamber membership expecting a short-term payoff um, probably will leave disappointed. Um, not that short-term payoffs don't happen. They do. In fact, they happen frequently, especially when someone comes in with the long-term play in mind, right? Understanding that the more you engage the more you're going to have a command of the network, the more your people are going to think of you and think of your organization and in turn come back to do business with you. And what's, what's great beyond just you know, sponsoring 
uh, and selling sponsorships per se as part of TRC is that selling of memberships. I mean, getting people who uh, who don't know our world, who are not familiar with it, to come take their first step into, um, you know, hashtag chamber life. And, <laughs> you know, it doesn't stick with everyone, but those that it does stick with, um, I think you're right. It makes a, It can make a massive impact. I mean, the, there, there's just no other organization in town, folks, where you can meet people uh, of just such a diverse array of backgrounds and stories and companies and jobs. And and if you're looking to grow your business, I mean, this is this is this is the first stop. It's got to be the first stop on the map. What kind of things, myself, when you're when you're meeting with a a new potential member, what what are the things that they're talking about? What what, what do you hear from them? Um, that maybe come up in those conversations as a priority for um, why they might want to make an investment in becoming a member of the chamber? Well, a lot of times, you know, you do hear they, you know, what's the return on investment? And so, you know, kind of go backwards a little bit. I give them my story as working at Talquin Electric and being a cooperative and being in the utility industry. Of course, we know we're currently in hurricane season. And um, last year we were um, um, in hurricane season and we got hit by uh, Mr. Michael. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things is when I tell my story, um, and they're, they, after they've asked me about the return on investment, I said, well, this is the return on investment that Talcon has been able to receive. And it is, like I said, again, I'm going to keep going back to relationship building because it is about building those relationships because other people are going to tell you, tell your story again and again. So, and they're going to tell about your business. And so what they're asking, you know, besides re return on investment, they're, they're asking me about what events are out there. And so I share with them the different events and they're like, okay, well, I can't do something afterwards, after work. I have to do something in the morning. So, you know, I, I tell them which events that are available to them because, again, we're, the chamber does a great job of being able to hit all areas and, and all time frames for people, whether it's a lunchtime meeting, you know, the women's, um, the women's forum or lunch and learn, or there's something like that, and you have your coffee connects, and then you have um, just different uh, different types of events, including our nonprofits, building better boards. It's just all. I think the chamber does a a really great job of pulling it all together and hitting on all facets. And so when they ask me, I just kind of, I try not to over talk them. I try to hear <laughs> what their <laughs> what their what their needs are. But after sharing the story and just listening to what you know what it is you know and say asking them how long they've been here do they have you know children are they invested in the community if they are you know are you giving back because this is also a really great way for businesses to give back to the community in which they live and to make it a better place so i i try to hit on those different feel-good stories and you know and let them know that we're all here and you know probably a chamber member or two or three your kids are probably going to school together they're play, yeah. probably playing baseball or, or football or something together or you're sitting in the stands at florida state or fuller and m <laughs> you know you're doing something so you know it's just again that common ground that we talked about earlier so you know i'm listening to what they're saying and then trying to adjust uh, adjust my conversation to that Sitting here talking to you both, it just blows my mind. It amazes me how much passion you guys both have for TRC and volunteering for the chamber. And I think that that speaks volumes because we have you both and probably 30 plus other volunteers who do this in day in and day out who are out there meeting people, talking to people taking away time from their own careers to share the mission of the chamber. What fuels your fire? What ignites your passion to share the mission of the chamber with people that you meet? Park, I'll ask you that. Well, I think it all comes down to people helping people. You know, I mean, when our community thrives, I mean, that, that helps me individually, that helps my family, that helps my employees that work for me, um, that helps everybody. So I, I think if we're stagnant, then we're, you know, we're, we're regressing for, for lack of a better way to say it. So we don't need, I don't want to be stagnant. I want to keep moving it forward and you know sometimes that's more challenging than you want it to be and sometimes it's easier than you expect it to be but that's what we do and that's why we do what we do you know so well my passion just comes from again you know, helping people as as park said earlier is is my mission i like i love to connect people 
and I love to help solve a problem you know if there's if there's any way possible to help solve that problem for them and and so that's just that's I would say you know somebody asked me I'm, I'm a great connector I love to connect and so and find a solution and you're gonna find a solution you know you get on the website for the chamber you go down there it offers a discount from business to business. It also has professional development, you know, and it has those things. And that was some other things that small businesses talked about as well. And, you know, you look on that and you're like, oh, you know, the chamber has that. Oh, you know, and so as a connector, you know, it feels good to me that I can refer them to one stop shop, so to speak. And then if not, if um, they don't have the answer, they, they will find the answer. So, and that's also a really good opportunity. So a connector for me is that it's a passion. You know, imagine a scenario where you had a product um, where a sponsorship could be placed. Maybe it's a podcast with two really wonderful hosts who, <laughs> hint, hint. you know, <laughs> who really have a command <laughs> over, uh, you know, modern airwaves and how to communicate with the masses. You know, that seems like something you could probably sell to a prospective chamber member. Um, of course. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. See what I did there, Absolutely. everybody? That was uh, mm-hmm. that was really shameful. Uh, <laughs> but it is worth talking about because we do have an opportunity for someone to be our presenting sponsor of the podcast uh, starting in 2020. So, you know, if you're looking for something like that, we've got two fine volunteers here that you could probably look into uh, that information with. But, you know, kind of bringing this all, all full circle, uh, one, appreciate y'all being with us and appreciate all the uh, hard work you're doing on behalf of the chamber when you're not working for your own organizations. I uh, know that's a, a big time commitment. Um, but I'm always intrigued by that volunteer side of the equation with TRC, what the volunteers get out of it, so to speak. Um, can you give us a, both just a little bit of reflection on what it actually has done for maybe your lines of business to be involved and engaged in the total resource campaign? Well, for me, uh, being involved with the, the TRC has allowed for me to just kind of go out and meet some of our Talwin members uh, that are our businesses that are out there. It has allowed me to really not just talk about um, the chamber, but then also answer any questions that they may have in regards to Top One Electric. So we begin to build a relationship because if I'm sitting here today, we all have members. You know, they're not customers, they're members. And so that is key. I mean, that's to me, members, you might as well say family. And so that's what it is. I get to go out here and talk to our families that are out there. So TRC just allows me to expand a lot more and get a, a, um, a feel of what it is and how to meet their needs. As a um, Talquin member, they get to come to me directly. They don't have to go through, a, you know, the phone, the Internet or anything like that. They get to see me at, a, at a, an event. And so for me, it's just been this a whirlwind of opportunity to meet with our members that are out there as well. I think on my end, um, and I agree with you completely that we, you know, we all serve as members, um, and, and we, we serve at the pleasure of our members for lack of a better way to say that. So, you know, we're always going to try to do what we can to help them. Um, I think the other side of that to me though, is it also puts a personal side with all the businesses I interact with. Um, you know, I look back and, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago when I joined access leads groups, you know, I had a good core group and I pretty much do every type of professional business I need right now with that group of individuals I knew nothing about until I was in that group with them. Um, you know, we, they, they're like my family, you know, and, and they're one text away if I need something and it's done within two minutes typically. Um, so, so I think we look at, I don't look, I look at it not only to grow my network, but also to help other people grow their network. Um, you know, again, we talk about the, the connection side of things is, you know, we're tasked with not only making sure you're taken care of, but on, on a, a total resource campaign side, but also on a business side. You know, if there's people we know that you need to be connected with, we're going to help you make that connection. You know, we're going to help with that with that handoff, that type of thing. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what that's what that's what makes that's what gives us happiness, I think. You know that we are helping the community move forward by doing that because a lot of people don't know what each other do and yeah. until you get that chance to sit down with them and talk about it i mean you know i think we all agree in the world of a business owner you say tell me what what your business does and they'll talk for hours and hours mm-hmm. 
you wouldn't talk about that like like that personally probably yeah. you know but but so so it's a, it's an open book of how can we change that story for you down the road you, you know and, and and that's what drives me at the end of the day so it's a good drive to have um parting thoughts anything you want someone they're interested in trc uh interested in sponsoring something in the chamber or growing or start kickstarting their membership What's the one thing that comes to mind that, that you would want them to know about our organization and um, why they should go ahead and do with the thing maybe they're thinking about doing? I, I think the biggest thing was just let us have the conversation. Yeah. You know, we'll buy you a cup of coffee, we'll grab lunch, you know, we can do it over the phone. Um, but let's just have that conversation and see if it's the right fit, show you where you would fit in, and then let's see where that goes. I mean, you. It might be something you want to take it slow and just become a member at this point, or increase your membership to get in front of a different audience. Um, you know, but that it's not all about selling a sponsorship in our world. It's about really how do we help your business grow, and there's all different avenues to do that. I would agree. I think that you know, again, thinking outside the box. Don't do things that you have been that you've been doing in the past. Do it different. And if you do have a membership, increase it. Continue to think and go outside of the box to make it happen because you, you're you gonna make a difference in your life with your business, you already started it. Now continue to make a bigger difference, a bigger imprint, and um, you have many different areas you can go, you know, from it, it ages, and and you're, and you're gonna build a relationship with, we didn't have some best friends like Park has, and I, like I've grown to have being a part of the chamber. So I think I say this is my second job, uh, so to speak. <laughs> and I love it. I mean, because I keep doing it. I keep coming back because I like it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, again, can't thank you all enough for all the hard work you're doing on behalf of our organization uh, and just being great community members. Um, it's um, We do live in a wonderful place, and we've got some incredible businesses. And I think one of our favorite things here at the Chamber is learning those stories of companies uh, the, and the people who make them work and then figuring out ways to tell those stories and put those stories in front of other folks. Um, you know, if you really were going to boil down what is it that we do here at the Chamber, it's that. We, we give businesses an opportunity to access our network and plug in in a way that they really couldn't do on their own. Uh, there, there, there is a lot of power within a network in that um, – People have a common understanding that we're all kind of in this thing together from a uh, community standpoint, and they want to see their businesses be a part of something bigger than just their standalone business, right? I think there is a desire to be a part of a, of a business community. We hear that phrase a lot, business community. Well, we truly do have a community here at the Chamber, and folks, if you're listening, if, you're, if you've thought about being a member, you've thought about sponsoring an event uh, in the future, we want you to be a part of that community. We want to give you an opportunity to let your business story shine. Uh, and I think I'm, I can speak on behalf of our staff in saying that we take a lot of pride in trying to put people in their best light and do it in a way that uh, works well for you and, and for your customers and uh, for your employees. And if you're interested in doing it, call our volunteers from the TRC campaign because we can get you plugged in. We've got a few weeks left in the campaign now. What, uh, middle runs, November. Middle, yeah. yeah, middle November. So um, what's the best way to get people plugged in? Obviously, y'all two are you know, rock stars. <laughs> but if you want to get plugged in with TRC, get an understanding of what's going on. If you're a volunteer here in this, or, the, or you're a member here in this for the first time, what's the best way to do it? I would say the best thing um, is you know reach out to the chamber. Um, there's always links in their e-newsletter. Um, there's links on their website, and you can always pick up the phone and call um, anyone there or just the general number, um, and just tell them you are interested in the Total Resource Campaign and how it can benefit your business. Um, and they will help get everything plugged in from there um, with you with the volunteer. You know, and me and Maysell would love to be your, the <laughs> volunteer that helps you. And you know, um, but yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. I think, um, and, and also, if you can't remember anything else, the person who helped you with your membership, which was Corey Melton or Tequila Brooks, mm -hmm. they will also be glad you just pick up the phone. I'm sure you get emails from them frequently, and hopefully you're responding. And no, no, they will be glad to connect you with one of us because we are all here to help. So please it, continue to um, help our our wonderful city, uh, Tallahassee, uh, to grow, and you'll be a part of that. 
Absolutely. We will link in the show notes the TRC portion of the website, which mm-hmm. I was just looking at earlier and does have a full list of volunteers on it. So mm-hmm. you could start there, see if you have any personal connections and start with the volunteer. I think also one note, Jay, before we close the show, we would be remiss if we didn't mention, give a shout out to Jay Smith, this year's campaign chair of Ajax Construction. He's also our chair-elect of the chamber, and he was on this podcast when we were very first starting out, I think episode three. So be sure to check that out if you haven't. Yeah, uh, he's so ever-present in our lives these days. <laughs> I, I, I did almost neglect to mention him. Uh, but we do have uh, this this really tremendous volunteer structure, again, folks, that, that makes this all happen. And again, boiling it back down to how we keep the doors open here and how we are able to keep putting on programming and uh, events and and, uh, cultivating our network uh, so that uh, we're growing the local economy and growing our businesses and having just a general positive impact on the community, we like to think. Uh, TRC is a big part of that lifeblood. So uh, if you are a sponsor, if you are someone who has sponsored or if you're a new member who's come in through the campaign, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks for being a part of something bigger than just yourself. And uh, we hope that you will continue to find value in that. And as always, if there's anything we can do for you here at the Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce, please just come pop in and say hello or give us a call or drop us a note. Folks, we appreciate you tuning in and listening today. As always, it's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to speak with you. And uh, we'll look forward to bringing you some really exciting episodes coming up here in the next few months and through the holidays. Uh, We've got a great lineup of guests. And as always, if you're enjoying the show, we would appreciate you giving us a like, giving us a subscription uh, on your favorite listening device, uh, and give us a review. You know, five stars preferable, but we'll take all the stars we can get. Uh, Again, thanks for listening in. We'll talk to you real soon. We'll be back with some more great stuff here in the coming weeks. Signing off. Take care.